or to the St. James, that we consider especially one who is so close to our divine Lord in many ways when we read the sacred scripture. We see that it was Peter, James, and John who went up to see him transfigured. It was Peter, James, and John that went with him closer into the Garden of Gethsemane, and they had their closer relationship with our divine Lord. And as we know with the life of St. James, that he died relatively young, he was older, but um, soon after our Lord, in the sense it was in 42, the year 42 AD, in which he was beheaded, and you know, the Herod, seeing that the Jews were pleased with him being imprisoned and then being beheaded, went ahead and had him, of course, um, put to death, and as one of the earlier apostles to die for the faith. And as we meditate upon the lives of the apostles, we especially consider this epistle today from St. Paul. As you read it, you see that St. Paul says, I'm not writing these things to confound you or to get you depressed or to try to make you give up, but to make you realize that these are the things that we will have to endure for salvation. And, um, you know, that, that's really what we should gather from that epistle. If you reread it, it's so true. I don't have a fixed abode, as it says. You have praise and I don't have praise. I'm un- you're worthy and I'm unworthy. All of these things that um, certainly played out in the lives of the in the lives of the apostles, that they were you know, the outcasts of society and ended up dying terrible deaths, uh, being martyred for the faith, as we know. So it's especially a reminder for us to pray for the, uh, the gift of uh, perseverance, which we need to pray for every day, because as time goes on, things aren't being things aren't prettier, so to speak, or getting any better in society. In fact, getting worse, and that is that is always going to be the case unless. The Catholic Church takes control, the true faith takes control of society because we see laws that are being passed that cannot be passed, you cannot make you know, something immoral law, and that's when of course you separate church and state and you take the church out of the equation, you can do anything you want in society as, as governments are doing. So when we reflect on the life of St. James, we know of course he went to Spain, and that uh, was the great pilgrimage to St. John and James Compostela in Spain. And I personally myself have not been there, maybe some of you have. Maybe one day we'll be lucky enough to, to visit that uh, great place of pilgrimage. But we know the importance of our Lord's command to the apostles and their fulfillment of that. Go ye therefore teach all nations, as they did teaching them and handing on the faith, and even to this day that these great places of pilgrimage, and although to a degree, you know, taken over by another sort of church, one day hopefully uh, will be restored to us. So, also today, as we know, we celebrate the Feast of St. Christopher and the consideration of the 14 Holy Hubbards, St. Erasmus, St. Pentamon, St. Barbara, St. Margaret, and many others, that we uh, have a special devotion to them and call upon them because they can intercede for us in a particular way that they are known to help us with the difficulties of this life. And this is a valley of tears. St. Paul makes that clear in the epistle today that um, you have to endure these things and certainly that's what we need to pray for each day the grace to, to persevere with our own crosses and trials. And you can say in a way that the greatest cross we have is ourself, overcoming our fallen human nature, which, you know, we, we know it to a degree. But the greatest achievement we, any of us can make is the knowledge of ourself. As St. Augustine said, Lord, may I know thee, may I know myself, because that is the greatest struggle we have with our own form in human nature. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.